Thank you. Please. Nicholas McGee. Here. Rachel Hendrickson. Here. Roger Bealey. Absent. Robin Saunders. Here. Richard Duperry. Here. Jennifer Ladd. Here. Rick Meinking. Here. With Rick out tonight, I'm sorry, with uh, Roger out tonight, we have Rick DuPerry as the alternate. He's going to be stepping in as a full voting member. <clears throat> we have two sets of minutes to approve tonight. It's the October 15th, 2019, and the November 4th, 2019 minutes. Uh, can I have a motion, please, to approve those minutes? So moved. I have a second. 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 Any discussion on either of the minutes? All in favor? So that was unanimous. First item tonight. Three Diamond Realty Inc. requests a site inventory and analysis review as part of a planned development project along the Highest Parkway, Assessor's Map R50, lots 34A through E. Jamal. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So this proposal uh, includes several properties along the southern portion of Highest Parkway and the applicants in front of the board for a site inventory and analysis uh, phase of the planned development review process. So as a quick reminder, the site inventory and analysis is intended to provide the applicant, the board and staff, with a better understanding of the overall site and opportunities, constraints that the natural built environment create for the development of the site, and it does not uh, result in a formal approval or denial of the application. Um, so the board should be sure to determine if the information provides a clear understanding of the site and identifies opportunities and constraints that will guide the utilization. So the expectation is that the preparation of this uh, phase of review will result in a master plan uh, subsequently. So in our staff review memo, we did note uh, that some of the required information was missing um, from the materials, including the annotated or annotated bubble diagram depicting which portions of the site are unsuitable for development, along with several other pieces of information related to uh, natural resources. However, staff thought it would be a good idea to um, keep the item on the agenda and start the review process with the board. Staff would also like to note that the applicant does not appear to have right title and interest for two of the five lots. Uh, prior to taking any action or consideration of these lots, the applicant will need to include documentation from the lot owners indicating they intend to participate in the proposed uh, project. I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Jamel. Uh, with that said, um, we, you know, knowing that we are missing some key pieces of information here, there's, there's really um, there's not a whole lot of in-depth we can go into on this sure. phase of it. However, you know, this is a good opportunity for anything you see coming down the road to ask uh, for a little bit of input from the board, which may help you in a, another stage of this uh, as you pull together the rest of the documents we need to review this. Um, so go ahead with that. Please introduce yourself and the plan. Sure. Jason Baffiatis, Atlantic Resource Consultants, here on behalf of uh, Linwood Higgins, uh, who's the primary uh, managing partner of Three Diamonds Realty, Inc. Um, yeah, so uh, this was kind of a difficult, uh, well, it's, it's two things. It's a difficult parcel and it's sort of a difficult way of envisioning um, the land. Linwood, uh, back in 2008, I believe, uh, the planning board did a pretty thorough review of uh, the entirety of, of the parcels as shown above, as well as actually some land on, across the street. Uh, there were another two parcels across the street that were... Um, part of sort of a kind of the preliminary version of what this process is now, I think, for your zoning ordinance. Um, during that process, half of it was approved and half of it was sort of left unapproved. It was in a, in a strange stage in the town. But during that process, he, there was a MDEP site location permit granted for the entirety of what you're seeing, as well as a, uh, an Army Corps of Engineering NERPA tier two permit, um, which covers, which drapes the entire parcel and also a traffic movement permit. So all of the state and federal permitting was done on this land. And then of course, everyone knows we had the recession and things kind of went a little bit shallow on the development end and the land sort of sat there. Uh, very recently, uh, a few of you are still members of the board that were here for Foley's Fitness, um, which is actually the parcel on the right as you look at the plan. Um, Mike Foley has been working with Linwood on generating some trails and things that are sort of tied together the, 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 uh, the site um, as we're going forward. And Linwood recently sold the parcel uh, next to Foley's Fitness to an applicant who I think will be coming 
to you real soon with an application. Uh, lots of moving pieces on these items as we have a lot of uh, MDOT uh, permitting things that we're going through. So we just kind of wanted to get this in front of you now, sort of talk about a couple of uses that we're considering uh, putting out in the master planning. Uh, as far as the site goes, it has been reviewed uh, pretty thoroughly by both this board in the past and MDEP, having the site location permit. Uh, the MDIF and W did, a, did the, the, the research again on the parcel. Nothing new has popped up. No, uh, no strange egg masses or anything have come through. We've redone the wetlands. We've redone the vernal pool scan. Uh, nothing has shown up that wasn't on the original permit. Uh, and Maine Historic Preservation Committee has also reviewed the project again and found that there's no, um, no obviously no buildings or his, of historical import have shown up on the property. Uh, it's completely wooded. It has been cut over, uh, especially on the left-hand side, as you see where most of the proposed development is shown. Uh, it has since sort of grown back in. Uh, I think uh, when about four years ago, five years ago, that was done. Um, was left in uh, fairly decent shape for a forestry project in this area. Uh, yeah, and that's basically the uh, the status of where this land sits now as, as an existing parcel. Uh, we are talking about a couple of uh, different uses. There's some residential components um, that we're working through. We've had a lot of interest in, uh, as well as some small scale commercial that goes. And of course, we know this is the famous 60-40 split for residential and commercial development uh, that we, we've been through. I've been through with this in the past with Enterprise Business Park. Uh, we have had conversations with David Miley. One of the key things about this, this particular master plan when it comes forward will be David is in support of connecting the road, the primary road that you see on the left-hand side there, and bringing it into the unbuilt phases of Enterprise Business Park which I think is a great idea because you have a right in and right out only uh, proposed to be built up next to the Land Rover dealership, which is on Route 1. And I think we all know how those work uh, in town and they're not necessarily a desirable uh, thing to have. So this gives uh, David Miley an outlet for any proposed development that he'll be bringing and it can get right on the Haggis Parkway and, and sort of avoid that Route 1 corridor, which I think is a pretty nice aspect of this project. Park it's not me, I'm out front. <laughs> so if anyone has any questions or uh, uh, comments about uh, types of development, things like that, that would be coming down the line. I'm more than happy to answer. Thank you very much. Uh, at this point, uh, we do have an opportunity for public comment. If there's anyone here that would like to get up and speak on this topic, please approach the podium and state your name. Seeing none, I'm going to close public comment. Uh, I'll just turn this over to the board to start. Uh, Robin, you want to jump in on this? <clears throat> sure. Um, I, guess, I guess I would like clarification from uh, staff and the applicant as to whether or not we will see this back in front of the planning board for site and inventory, uh, site inventory and um, analysis uh, phase, or is this it? No, no, we'll, we'll uh, so there's a second step, so then you have to go to, I'll probably give Jamel sort of a combination of uh, the items that uh, are missing. appear to be missing as well as the master plan and we'll okay. probably meet uh, with staff okay. with that prior to resubmitting just to go over some of the uses because we're actually talking about a few uses that would require some some input from town staff and some some connectivity and things like that that okay. that we get a lot of uh, a lot of mileage out of okay and I'm pleased to hear that um, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that even though work was done in 2008 um, I'm sorry to hear that we have to redo it, but I am pleased to hear that not a lot has changed, and I guess I'm interested in um, where you are with the wetland de delineation. Yep, yeah, so we, we delineated the entire parcel again uh, this spring and spring and fall. So we did the, 
the, the vertical pool scan, obviously, okay. during the, the time the frame that you're The May to, period that... Yep, yep, okay. the April, the May period. Yep. Um, and we're reasonably pleased to see that there, there was nothing there was nothing there. Um, there were a couple of man-made areas that didn't qualify as, as, mm -hmm. as there weren't enough egg masses in them. Um, and that Jim Logan did that work. Uh, so okay. Longview Partners. So as part of any future submission, that, that obviously would, would come in with it. Uh, and wetlands were also done by a combination of Jim Logan, uh, Longview Partners, and uh, a fellow named Steve Marcotte, okay. uh, who does a lot of uh, wetland work. And, um, and yeah, so, what, so the, the wetlands you're seeing there has actually been updated. Okay. Um, and if you compare it to one of the old plans, if you had them on file, you'd see that uh, there's a little bit, it, they actually the wetlands grew by about half an acre mm. since the last delineation, which is a little, Foley's Fitness had a big problem with that. Yeah, but, yeah, and I would actually expect the opposite since we've had such drought years, the last, especially the last five, five years or so. Yeah, that's so. a tough area of town. That's pretty much yeah. always going to be. <laughs> yeah. But. Um, are, do you have any um, objections or questions on the staff comments that were provided to you? No, but it's a little... Um, it's uh, uh, no, we can we can deal with those. There's no problems there. Uh, it's a little bit uh, when you're dealing with a parcel that's had so much work done on it mm -hmm. uh, previously. Uh, one of the problems we had was IFNW thought that they didn't get back to us right away because they had it in their files that they had sent the data out mm -hmm. for to the state years ago for the site mm -hmm. location permit. So mm -hmm. it's always a question of how much do we redo when we're submitting a. a on a piece of land like this, which has had such exhaustive review by so many um, different authorities, and uh, we, you know, we try to find that balance, but mm -hmm. perfectly happy to supply all the information that he's looking for. And just out of curiosity, what what would you say is is sort of like the the biggest constraint on site? It's wetlands, yeah, wetlands and sort of your in situ uh, soils. There's a lot of uh, there's what you find in this typical area and it would be the same with enterprise business park is your uplands are typically like a krogan material it's a sand over um uh, a loamy sand over clays mm -hmm. and uh the more of the goopy clay you get sort of prohibits development where you're putting a lot of pressure on the mm -hmm. foundation so really we're looking at simple foundation uh single story wood frame structures you wouldn't really get like a a six-story building in this zone right. you just it would be cost prohibitive to put the foundation in do you have a feel for what the approximate amount of wetlands are that will be uh impacted that is a very good question we don't uh, in this iteration i believe we're under what is currently permitted okay. but what is permitted was was quite a bit it was over two acres okay so great i'm all set then. thanks robin rachel yeah um could you I guess I didn't understand when I went through this that actually the development that's really along Haggis Parkway is not part of this. Is that correct? The large frontage along Haggis? So that's that's what you're saying is coming, yes. perhaps? Yeah, yeah. So, so every other than, you know, that, that's a really good point. Sometimes I look at these things too long and it makes so much sense to me. We should have noted that Foley's Fitness is existing. It should be. That is the Correct. only thing that is currently built, right? The rest is vacant land. And the property next to it where you show both the commercial and residential, that is not part of this plan or is part of this plan? We would like it to be. Uh, there's a lot of, um, uh, we're, we're talking together. The other engineering firms are representing uh, that parcel, another engineering firm, but we're working with them pretty closely on sort of streamlining our applications, uh, both for this board as well as for MDOT, because we're sharing entrances and things like that. So um, that now confuses the issue, I guess. So, but all we're looking at tonight and for the foreseeable future until somebody comes to, to us and says, no, it's all changed because we've just added the rest of this, okay. uh, is the original uh, development with the road leading to or hopefully connecting to um, the enterprise. I would say for the purposes of tonight, yeah, focus on that. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Um, I, I guess one of the things that might have changed since 2008 that I think you're going to need to really take a hard look at 
uh, is the amount of traffic on Hygus Parkway uh, and the cut throughs, uh, the, the, the road cuts. So if you have a cut at, Foley, at Foley's Fitness, a cut at this other in the future place that you're talking about perhaps, um, and then the cut, you then on the other side you have uh, Scotto Hill, you have the, what is it, the Horizon Network. Horizon. Right, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and then the, the cut for, the, uh, for this project, all of a sudden you have an awful lot of side streets coming out onto Hygis Parkway, and you already have the side street coming out at Ingleside. Um, and I think offering the opportunity for everybody or pe people in Enterprise Park to cut through and get onto Hygis Parkway is going to tremendously increase the amount of traffic. Sure. And so that, that's something, uh, what I'm saying is that that's something that certainly we really need to, to take a look at. Yeah. Um, there is a property for sale up Scotto Hills that might already have been for sale that might be coming through, um, adding even more to the traffic. There is proposed development um, along Ingleside. There is proposed development further down to the, the west on, on Hygis Parkway. Uh, and while we don't make the last person in uh, take care of everything, I, I think we need to make sure that um, we really are thinking ahead on this, and, and you, you're the guys that are coming in with the largest proposal right now in terms of the amount of traffic that there is. Could I tape record that and pass that? So we're working with, with town staff. We, we've been talking about these issues. I, I will add, so Haggis Parkway is controlled by the state of Maine, mm -hmm. and that is a uh, limited access highway. So all the entrances that you see are, have actually been pre-approved in the MDOT master plan for Haggis Parkway. Uh, with, I believe, in the old traffic movement permit, which you'll get a copy of, even though it's exempt, it's a pretty good document to sort of look through when we come in with a master plan. The, the trips generated from each of these uses pretty much match what had previously been approved. Um, understanding that background traffic data has changed in the last 10 or 12 years. And certainly with Scarborough Downs coming online, uh, I believe you have, you're looking at another proposal currently across the street on uh, Mr. Scammon's land. Um, mm -hmm. That's at Ingleside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, there's, there's really, I, Haggis Parkway, if you were to ask my professional opinion, will look completely different in two years. Um, and so that is something that we're, we're already ahead of the game on. We're working with trying to get a sort of a master plan in place for all of the property owners to sort of benefit from. I think uh, the more you can do that, um, the better off all of the property owners are, and, and the traveling public are going to be as, yep. as Hygis gets uh, more, and, more and more busy. What if I just jump in yep. on that uh, before it goes away? Um, so the town is starting to work with our traffic consultants, traffic engineers on a, uh, if Jay was here he would tell you guys, but we're going to start a planning process for Hygis Parkway, uh, similar to what Jason was just talking about so we're going to hopefully in the next year or so create some sort of plan for the development that we see coming along to hopefully not just have you know little left-hand turn lanes here and there hopefully it's a more uh, coordinated system so hopefully we'll see that soon too I, th I think yeah and I, I think that's a very important part of this whole this whole application to get started with that now uh, I I do have one question about uh, wildlife, and since I travel Hygis Parkway every day, um, I am aware that there was a lot of cutting that was done, and what's grown up, I'm wondering, is habitat for the um, New England cottontail. Has that been checked? Yeah, so IFNW doesn't have that on their radar, um, and, and typically how that goes is that they, there have been no sightings reported to them, because they obviously don't have people in the field all the time. Uh, I can follow up with them, uh, just maybe schedule a field meeting with their field person just to, just to go through. Um, yeah, and after the last after the last cutting, yeah. um, there's there is actually you can see can, be, can see it from the road some potentially prime areas, yeah. and there may be nothing there, but it is something that we would we would like to see. There might not have been anything there uh, before the cut, but now there is. There could be, so that's something to take a look at. 
and I do th think we, I, I guess the, when you talked about the trail system, um, is there any, going to be any thought on additional road system uh, connections from Foley to the mythical one in between to what you're proposing? <laughs> yeah, so that, so if you look, so when I say the site is wet, I, I really am not exaggerating. Yeah, Basically, no, I, I see the pools. Yeah, yeah, where, yeah. wherever, where all those little turkey tracks are wetlands, mm -hmm. and wherever, you know, then whenever there's a building and some parking, it's, it's upland. Um, so from, an in, from a wetlands impact perspective, you will not see any connectivity other than um, what we can do is, in, and we can take down anything less than, I think, two inches caliper and create, if you don't put any wood chips, you can create trails that will be wet during the wet times of the year, but people can run through them and there'll be connectivity that way. It will never be anything, I don't think, unless Linwood wants to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in mitigation, um, putting a road, you know, connecting entrances and things like that. Pretty much what you see um, is, is the, the limit of what you're gonna get. So the interconnectivity actually will be from the Downs Road to Enterprise Park, which is already there and Enterprise Park to Hygus Parkway. Yes. All right, thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, Rick. Yeah, my biggest concern would be the traffic on Haggis Parkway as well, because it is, and I, it's nice that Jamal pointed out that they're working on that. Um, as far as what you've submitted tonight, it, it looks fine. I'm still not, um, I still don't fully grasp exactly what you're proposing to put in there other than you know what you've proposed here is um and i'm sure that will become clearer as you move forward yeah in the process. so it's so. just it's it's hard for us to forecast um we have a couple of interested parties that are interested primarily in uh residential we also have another interested party that is interested in uh the climate control storage um that seems to be a really good business these days um so those ones I could say with with certainty would be something that you may see as a site plan within the next six to ten months, um, and the other ones would just be your your general um, anything that's good in, in the zone. It was you have to go through this process to sort of get them to the site plan. So, right, right. You know, understand. doctors' offices. Yeah, like I would that. just you know make sure you get everything to staff that you need to get as far yeah. as you're fulfilling the information and then. Um, you know, what you've submitted looks fine to me. Uh, I think pay particular attention to the things you're already paying attention to, the wetlands yeah. and the traffic. Yeah. So, that's all. Thanks, Rick. Rick? Yeah. Um, just looking at what might be considered, a, I know it's mixed use, it looks like a lot of parking. I would, uh, with all the wetlands that you've just spoken of, I would hope that maybe we can find businesses or, or you'll be putting in structures that would support less impervious surface, if you will. Yeah, and, and actually, so the, one of the residential uh, interested parties, uh, he's, he's actually a little further along uh, with his planning process. Uh, and I can tell you that parking will be underneath the structure uh, if he proceeds forward, which I think is a great uh, use, um, especially on this land where your foundation systems are so expensive to build. If you, if you, but if if you get that foundation up away from those clays by having the parking structure essentially be in your foundation, it, it actually helps the development. So as long as you have a real tight thermal envelope underneath yeah. Yeah. The, the bottom. Yeah. Yep. I'm, pretty, I'm anxious to see what you're coming back with. Yep. Thanks, Rick. Jen. Yep. Um, <clears throat> just curious, I know the, there was the staff comment about the other two parcels that you didn't have right title and interest to, but you also alluded to the prior um, go around with the board in 2008. Are those two parcels? Is there any intent to include the other lots on the other side of Haggis Parkway with this plan? So we had I had discussions with uh, Jay Chase uh, about this whole situation prior to this. I think Jamel, you might even uh, been there. We still don't really know how to handle. We're 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 forgetting the other the other properties across the street. We don't 
think that it's a straight pass as a straight face test that it would be a cohesive plan use development. Um, I think there is an argument with sign off from the prop new property owners to include them in this process um, only because I, I actually think that the use that's coming in on the middle lot there um, where the I think it's the three S's sorry my glasses aren't as strong as my eyes want to be um, they actually have a, a fairly big development that'll fit that. So uh, there is a lot of, I think, value in us talking about all this as once. Now, whether we get credit for that is something we'll work through with staff. Uh, certainly this project works, even if we just take what Linwood owns and, and proceed with it. Um, okay, and I also noticed in the, the larger um, site plan, sheet not this one um that there is a little sliver of this land that appears to connect to route one yeah so the, uh that actually what we just found out because we we're updating the boundary survey um the boundary survey you have was a trace survey that's uh i think about 11 years old now um, that piece of land has actually been deeded to the abutter to the south um, and Linwood has kept the rights to use that, but the, the no longer has title right or interest over that. It's and I actually think it's a 30 foot wide um, so pretty, easement. So pretty small. So yeah. you're obviously what you've laid out here doesn't show using that for any sort of um, developed connectivity. But no, I mean I think the only, I think what it was intended for was probably before they ran sewer down Hygus was to get a was a sewer easement. Um, you know, it does raise an interesting question. It is pretty well uplands. If there was ever a side, you know, I could conceive like of a sidewalk connectivity through there if the Route 1 sidewalk system gets further developed. Okay. Uh, yeah, just curious about that. And I think that's all. Thanks, Jen. I think they've covered it. Uh, do you have any questions for staff or this board? Uh, no, nope, no, nope, not at all. I, I really appreciate all your input, and uh, we're pretty excited about this. I think it will help spur sort of putting Haggis Parkway, I think, sort of getting it to the point where it needs to be, and uh, got a lot of experience in this particular era of Scarborough, so uh, it's good to see, you know, things moving forward. Just so staff's clear, uh, is the board comfortable with the applicant providing sort of like a supplemental submission to fulfill the requirements along with the master plan is that sort of what you were thinking Jason yeah because it, it's similar to what we did with part of the reason that it might have slipped by me on this one is that I modeled it after Enterprise Business Park and we had the same issue um, uh, we had a lot of existing permits we thought would be sufficient for those that type of review um, certainly more than happy to up to I think the master plan meetings will probably be more than one probably two or three so I think there's a lot of time during that process to get that information in on the first one and sort of include it. Um, and to me, the master plan sort of covers that, inf you know, there's a lot of redundancy in the information covered. Um, so typically what we do is we build the master plan off of this document. Um, so that'd be great if, you know, we wanna, I can sort of submit the whole package maybe a, a week earlier than normal and then we can go through it and sort of buffer that out. Board have thoughts? I guess if that works for staff, we're comfortable with it. Sure. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next item on tonight's agenda is the Caffeinated Pig LLC requests a sketch plan review for One Bridges Drive, Assessor's Map R039, Lot 24. Jamal. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So this is located at uh, One Bridges Drive, um, sort of the intersection of Bridges Drive and Payne Road. Um, it's located in the B3 zoning district, and the applicant's proposing a 1,010 square foot drive-through coffee shop. Uh, so it's a sketch plan. Staff would just like to remo remind the board that tonight's review is a chance for the board and the applicant to have a high-level discussion, and it helps set the table for the formal uh, site plan application in the future. So just a few comments to run down. Um, as staff noted in our memo, uh, there are several town departments um, that have expressed concerns about the potential traffic impacts uh, the project would have in the already problematic 
intersection. Uh, so staff has recommended the applicant coordinate a meeting uh, with the department to discuss any mitigation that may be necessary uh, for this proposal. The applicant should also update the board on their main DOT uh, traffic movement permit process. Uh, since the project is located in the B3 zoning district, it is subject to the town's commercial design standards. Uh, staff has pointed out uh, several standards that apply to the proposal, including the corner, no corner lot standards and the drive-through standards. Uh, so the board should be sure to provide uh, direction to the applicant in regards to the proposed uh, site and building design. And finally, the zoning standards do require a buffer strip of 10 feet along the bridge's drive frontage and 15 feet along the Payne Road frontage uh, to help enhance the visual environment. It does look like the applicant did include uh, these buffer areas, uh, but the board should discuss the required, these required strips and if you are comfortable with the proposed grades and design as proposed. And I'll turn it back to you. Thank you, Jamil. Would the applicant like to approach the podium and share your name and a little highlight of the plan? Sure. Thanks. Uh, good evening. I'm Sean Thies with CES Engineers representing the applicant tonight, um, <laughs> who are also in the audience to uh, help address any questions or comments that you might have. Um, as Jamal said, uh, roughly a 1,000 square foot Aroma Joe's uh, drive through coffee shop. Um, we've located it, um, the entrance essentially as far back from um, Payne Road on the property as we could to still accommodate um, where we have a uh, septic system. The lot is currently, um, there's a there's an upland piece uh, directly adjacent to Bridges Drive, and then um, you can sort of see the, the existing condition contours underneath our development, but it slopes off uh, pretty significantly uh, uh, to the north and then flattens out to a, a big wetland area essentially on the, uh, the northern, probably northern half of the site. So we've tried to crowd the, uh, the development as close to Bridges Drive as we could to minimize the, uh, the wetland impacts. There's also a, uh, a culvert crossing on Bridges Drive near the intersection with Payne Road, and that has a, uh, a DOT drainage easement where uh, the culvert outlets. So we've uh, had discussions with DOT about um, uh, rerouting the, the outlet from that culvert. Um, they wouldn't allow us to extend the culvert itself to pipe that and, and fill in the area, so what we had to do was grade a ditch between the um, sort of the end of our proposed development and Payne Road to allow that water to flow around the site. So that's part of the reason why you see a, a, a big slope down on the easterly part of the development and then slopes back up to Payne Road. We couldn't fill that sort of gully in and pipe that. Um, uh, DOT wouldn't allow that to be piped, so it ends up being a ditch there. Um, we're currently showing uh, I believe there's nine parking spaces shown. The ordinance calls for a minimum of 10 for a uh, restaurant with a drive through window. Um, in this case, there's no inside seating. It's uh, strictly drive through and there's a walk-up window. Um, and the walk-up window for a, a location like this is typically for if somebody places a large order for them to, uh, to be able to pull over and park while the order is prepared and then it can be brought out to them. So it's, it's not anticipating a lot of walk-up traffic. So really that parking is, is there for employees only typically. So um, we've, we'll be asking for a waiver. We did show a spot uh, or we will show a spot where we can add the tent space if needed. Um, but I think nine spaces is, is more than enough for, for this site. Um, there's public water on Payne Road to serve the development and there will be a, an on-site uh, septic system on the westerly portion of the site. Um, as far as uh, the layout, I think um, that's sort of the summary. Um, I would like to go down through, I guess, some of the staff comments for some feedback on some of those items for uh, input from the board on things that uh, might need to be changed or if the board is, is happy with them as is. But, um, 
I don't know if we'd like to do that now or after comment. Yeah, if you could actually go over anything on the staff notes that you causes you concern or yep. uh, you wanted clarity on. Okay. Now, now's a good time before we get into uh, the board session. Sure. Bit. Okay. Um, as Jamel said, we've submitted a uh, traffic movement permit to, to Maine DOT. I believe there's a trying to schedule a scoping meeting, uh, which would include the town um, the first week in December. I don't know if that has been finalized yet, um, but that would obviously uh, include conversations with the town and DOT at that time. Um, if we need to have a separate meeting with staff, um, we can do that as well. Um, so I think that's uh, we're we're aware of the that there are issues with that uh, intersection now. So uh, we do plan to take that up with DOT in the town. Um, the um, commercial design standards, um, because we've we've situated the building, I think as close to the intersection as we can, and still accommodate the DOT easement, the drainage easement is that's there. Um, so I don't think we can push that any closer to the intersection. The um, minimum building height of 20 feet. Um, I'm assuming that that's measured to the peak of the roof. Um, we're currently probably in this. Is, so the plans for the Aroma Joe's, it's essentially a standard uh, floor plan, building elevations for, uh, for this model store. Um, that's not to say that it can't be amended, but I think currently to the peak for, for this size building, it's like 17 or 18 feet to the peak of the roof as opposed to the the 20 foot minimum so i guess some feedback from the board on that standard would be appreciated and the other one for the layout um, is uh, the drive-through windows on a corner lot so this building has a, a drive-through order window on the uh, south side and then a pickup window on the north side so there's there's no way to orient the building and not have a drive-through window facing either uh, Bridges Drive or, or Payne Road. So we'd be looking for some input from the board on, on that situation. Um, I think Jamel addressed, so we've provided the, um, the buffer strips. Um, it's not, there's not uh, natural vegetation there, but we'll be providing a landscape plan with uh, with plantings along both of those frontages. Um, on the second page of the comments, um, we can, we'll look at the, um, the enter exit signs. So we can review that with the applicant. We will provide the landscape plan. Uh, we'll be providing the photometrics plan. Um, we have a stormwater management plan. We're proposing to use porous pavement on the entire site. Um, we've prepared, so we've prepared our traffic movement permit. We've also prepared a uh, traffic analysis um, uh, that's being submitted to the town. Um, of course, we've had the, the building plans submitted. The, we've talked about the off-street parking calculation. Um, We've submitted, or we will be submitting plans for the signs. Uh, there's snow storage proposed at the um, westerly end, sort of near the, uh, I believe that's the uh, sort of bubbly area to the left of the entrance, snow storage area there. And the auto turn simulation, so for asking for a, uh, to show that a 40 foot ladder truck um, can enter the site and get around the site with vehicles in the drive through lane. Um, I'm quite sure that that's not going to be possible with our layout. Um, and I guess I would just, I'd, I know there's another, uh, the comment below that talks about coordinate with the fire department for access to the site. So I wasn't sure if that was um, staff comment or fire department. Um, I guess in order to make a, make that work for a 40 foot ladder truck, we'd have to add um, most likely wider, wider lanes 
and push the site further to the north and have more wetland impact. So I'm not sure the, uh, I guess I'd want to discuss the practicality of uh, needing to have a ladder truck come to a, a building of this size. And then um, I guess looking at it with, if there weren't, if we weren't looking at it with the cars in the queue lane, I think it works because it's very similar to another layout that we've done for Aroma Joe's. Um, so again, if, if there was an emergency, it seems like the cars could, would potentially clear out of the, not stay at the drive through lanes, but that was uh, probably one of the bigger items on the staff review comments that could cause problems. Um, I think that's it. All right, thank you very much. Um, we do have an opportunity for public comment this evening on this. If there's anyone here that would like to speak on this, please post the podium and state your name. Seeing none, I'm going to close public comment. Uh, Jen, do you want to go first on this? Sure. Um, I uh, echo the staff comments about just coordinating with the other departments on the traffic impacts. Um, very curious to see how your conversations progress with um, DOT regarding the impacts from this site. I would uh, in particular be curious about the impact that this has on left turn movements out of Bridges Drive onto Payne Road, knowing that without this development, that movement is challenged already. Um, <clears throat> but I'm sure that, that will, um, you know, that will get flushed out through that process. Um, the, I, I do think that, that uh, the grading that you're proposing within the buffer strip is pretty significant um, or significant enough that I'm, I'm curious what will come back with your landscape plan um, if the intent of the ordinance is to provide a, you know, a, a, a green buffer between the pain road and the development, this, this doesn't, I mean, that's a pretty, it's a pretty significant um, grade change there that you're proposing so um, and I noticed that there's also a sign that's been placed right there I would assume that you wouldn't have a sign there if you weren't assuming that it could be seen from the road um, which sort of seems contradictory to the the intent of having um, a, a landscape buffer there um, and the other um, the other comment about the la the ladder truck, I'm sure you'll, you know, you'll get comments back from that on um, from the fire department. I guess I would just say that for a building of 17 or 20 feet, I would kind of tend to agree that a 40 foot ladder truck might be a little bit um, excessive. But I'm not a firefighter, and um, you know value their input, but also just recognize that the, being able to accommodate a vehicle of that size, as you stated, does not come without compromise um, with something else. And so I guess I would just ask you as the applicant and staff also uh, on behalf of the board to just bring that up with the fire department and, you know, find out if there's an opportunity for them to bring a smaller truck. <laughs> um, or just think about ac full access to the site in a different way, you know, maybe coming in the opposite way or what it, whatever it is. Um, I just think it would be a shame to add so much more impervious area and impact the wetlands in order to accommodate one um, large vehicle. Um, those were the, bi the biggest comments that I had. Thanks, John. Rick, Mike King? Um, I'm a little concerned about the snow storage based on the impervious surface that's here, if that's going to be adequate enough. Uh, and knowing how plowers plow, they're not all going to put it in that area. So maybe there's an opportunity to uh, find other small storage, uh, snow storage areas if possible. Um, on your foundation plan, I noticed you're going to insulate for the frost wall, 
but I would recommend you take a look at possibly insulating underneath that slab. I don't see anything on the drawing there, but you called out the uh, insulation on the frost wall. Those are my only two things. Thanks, Rick. Uh, Rick DePerry. Um, the driveway that goes into the uh, facility, is that, it's, it's hard to tell from this particular drawing and um, the site drawing, but is that about halfway between Bridges Road, Payne Road and, and um, Holmes Road? Is that kind of how you laid that out? Or, or did you just went as far away from Payne Road as you can get? Where our entrance? Yeah. Yeah, essentially we went as far away from the intersection with Payne Road. Right. Yeah staying on our property as, uh, as we can yeah play. I'm just trying to I was just trying to envision the site as to how far that is from the next intersection up the Holmes Road intersection you know what I mean down so, bridges drive yeah um, it's that road they a lot of people use that road uh, at night so that they don't have to go up 114 they they go up Bridges Road and then up Holmes Road. So, but as far as um, you know, it's it's good that you laid it out the way that you did, so that that's as far away from the Payne Road intersection as it is. Um, the nine space is instead of. T um, I'm, I'm okay with the leaving out that extra space for now. Um, I'm, I am a little bit concerned about the left-hand turn, let people turning into there, but, you know, depending on the time of day, it, it, it probably will only be an issue at certain times of the day. And, You're um, saying left-hand turns into the property? Yeah, if you're coming down Bridges Road from Payne Road, so if you're coming down Bridges Road towards Payne Road mm -hmm. and you're making that left-hand turn, um, you know, the people coming... Bridges Road, that, that traffic may back up a little bit if there's a lot of traffic coming up from Payne Road, but the way the traffic pattern goes there, it probably won't be an issue because the time today when people are stopping to get coffee, everybody's going to be going one way, and then at night, pretty much everybody goes the other way, so you'll probably be fine. Yeah, I don't, I don't, have, a, a, um, I don't have a lot of negative things to say about it. I think it's not a bad place to put in a room, Joe's. Thanks, Rick. Rachel. Yeah, I'm, um, I guess tonight is my night to be picky. Uh, I counted the parking spots, and I can only come up with eight. Are you counting the one at the very end as the road, as the drive starts to turn? Because that would be a car uh, that actually encroaches on that lane at the very. Yes, yeah, so we have counted that as a space. Um, I question really whether that is a, a legitimate, using the term loosely, legitimate space because it does encroach upon where the driveway turns. Uh, the other question that I had about uh, the parking is you've, you do have people that are backing into the drive space, the drive lane. As people come and pick up their coffee, and head towards the exit, if you have anybody backing out from one of those spaces, you're creating a potential for you know, a little accident there. I don't know the, I don't know how you fix it. <laughs> I just present the problem to you, and you're the engineer, so you get to fix it. Um, that's, that's something I would like to, I would like to see. I mean, it, it's, I feel a little more comfortable when you say you're really not gonna have a lot of walk-ups. Because if you do have if you do have a lot of walk-ups, then you are going to have a lot of cars coming in, backing out, coming in, backing out as people are going past the uh, the, the pickup area. Uh, another question that I have is, what's the size of the um, delivery truck that would be coming to this facility? The question leads to the question uh, that leads to the question: Is it forty feet or less? It's uh, 25. Okay. It's, uh, and it's a uh, 
I'm not sure what your ladder truck is, if it's a fixed axle, but the uh, delivery truck is a uh, short tractor trailer. So it completely different turning radiuses. So you can show us that turning radius. You could show us that turning, you could yeah. nod your head, yes. You could yes. show us that turning radius so that um, we could feel comfortable that the only time a 40 foot truck might be there would be if something that we don't want to happen happens. Right. Okay. Uh, I think what's one of the things that's gonna be important is the, the robust landscaping. I don't see how you can otherwise arrange this building on this property. I don't either. I, I, uh, so that goes then to what do you do to disguise and hide and beautify, uh, and that is the, a very robust landscaping plan. So as we as we see your next iteration, um, that's that would be that would be really important to see. And finally, I think I had one more question. Yeah, I, I was a little con confused by the number of neon lights that you proposed on signs. Um, an awful lot of which say open. Right. When I looked at the, uh, I looked at the building plans, okay, uh, and there were several windows or signs there that were neon and open, and you really have to be careful with signs. So I would suggest you take a look at um, the the uh, sign requirements here in Scarborough, and that uh, allowed me to remember what else I had. Now um, I saw that you said, let me see. Um, the development will cover approximately 0.7 acres, re resulting in over half of the site to remain undeveloped and open to future development. Oh. There's no future. There's nothing left on that site that could be developed. It's all <laughs> wetlands. So. Okay, so that phrase gets yeah. eliminated from anything else. That's the only thing that we're talking about here. And you say the wetlands were delineated on 12-9-2014, which puts you about a week and a half before you would have to come up with a new wetland delineation. And you're smiling because you knew that too, right? We did. Um, we didn't do a uh, updated delineation, but our wetland scientist has been to the site to, to walk it over. It's essentially the, where the slope ends, it turns into wetlands, so it's not really gonna, gonna change at all. It's, um, the toe of the slope is where the wetland line is. And one final thing, um, I really want to know how tall that building is, uh, and it's possible that you can, and perhaps desirable, that you get uh, creative about raising the height. Are you, just to be clear, are we measuring it from the peak of the roof? I believe so. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So yeah, I, if, if it needs to be 20, they could make essentially all the walls two feet taller and have a higher ceiling in the building. That would be wonderful. All right, thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Robin. Yeah, I just want to iter reiterate what Rachel mentioned about the wetland de delineation needing. We'll definitely need something in writing for staff to identify that the wetlands have been reevaluated um, and um, reassessed. Um, how much impervious area do you have on the site right now? Right now, existing no, or no, no, no. Sorry. what As we have proposed. proposed? Yeah. Do you remember that number? Too? That that is where the point seven came from. Well, that was that's uh, no. Okay. I don't know the exact number on that. So I'm you don't guessing. So we've got a thousand square foot building. Um, I mean, it's less than half an acre, but uh, okay. probably closer to. 15,000 square feet okay. or so. Okay, all right. So you're not near the one acre threshold for any, no. any reason. No. Okay, no. got it. Then um, I think we, I think you get a lot of stuff going on here that you're trying to kind of put a square peg in a round hole just a little bit. And, you know, we're going to work with you, but I think you get to sort of, um, you got to sort of choose which, uh, choose your battle, so to speak, in that, you know, we've got some, some, progress to be made, whether it's the commercial design standards and looking at the, the designs that were in here, they all say 42 Jagger Mill Road, Sanford, Maine. So I'm assuming that you have, you know, basically like a cookie cutter that you're trying to take here, there and everywhere. So I think we, it's just a matter of um, 
customizing it to Scarborough's design standards, um, auto turn simulation needs, um, buffer, natural buffer and hydrology standards, um, sign requirements, um, that type of thing. Um, as my colleagues have said, I mean, there, th this, this could work here, but traffic is going to be a really important element to think about. Um, why are you saying that there's with respect to the buffer sean are you saying that there's no natural vegetation there now there's natural veget so you can see the existing uh, tree yep. line on the plan yeah um but once we do that grading it's essentially going to take away any of the natural buffer till we get to the toe of the slope where we will then the natural trees and everything will remain okay. so you can see it there's um, along Payne Road, yeah. um, where where we're tying in there um, at the end of that grading, but yeah. essentially everything to the south of that slope will be any existing or natural vegetation would be gone. Okay. Um, again, I echo what my peers have said that you know a robust landscape plan is going to be an important element here. Um, Uh, what was this? Discuss, discuss potential collaboration on any required improvements to Payne Road, Bridges Road intersection. Um, given the project's proximity to Scarborough Downs redevelopment project, staff recommends that the applicant coordinate with their development team to discuss potential collaboration on any required improvements. So is that something that you guys will be embarking on? I mean, this, there's a lot of growth and development in this area, and we'd love to have you be part of it. Right. But it's important to be part of the discussion, I guess. So. Yeah, I was, my thoughts were once we have our scoping meeting with DOT to get a better sense of um, okay. what they might be required to do and what we might be required to do um, okay. would, I guess, sort of weed out uh, how we could work together on, yeah. on those things. And I guess, you know, we are looking for, you know, you're looking for us to sort of either provide a waiver or bend a little bit on, again, on parking spaces and on the natural buffer requirements and on the auto turn. So, so really think about, I think, what's, what's going to be your sticking point, what's going to be the one area where you come to us and ask for a waiver, because it, it's, it's, you know, it's not likely that you'll want to have a waiver for all of these things. I don't know that we can necessarily do that in this area, because there is so much going on. So, and I guess there's no other nicer way to put it. I'm, I'm sorry. But I know that you're in good hands. I went to college with this guy, so you're fine. Good to see you, Sean. You too, Robin. Thank you, Robin. Um, so I think they've hit pretty much on all the high, high notes here, but I will say um, just a couple things. One, the traffic movement permit, what you get back for a traffic analysis, I think is really important. And I think it's going to tell you a little bit about how this business might fare here as well. Um, and, and I say that only because if People can't feel they can access this site properly, use it properly, park if they want to, they won't use it. Um, and then what we end up with is a situation where we have a, a building and a lot that might go vacant one day, um, sitting on a corner of a very busy area. Um, so I think that what that traffic analysis looks like, what, what that intersection may look like down the road is going to be really critical to how this project kind of moves along, in my mind. Um, as far as the fire truck goes, um, pretty sure they'd work with you. I think you just need to get them around that bend. And I know it's, it's kind of funny to say, like, yeah, it's the 40-foot ladder truck that has to go around. That's not the one they probably want to send, but it might be the one that's nearby and able to put out a fire first. And it might be overkill, but it just might be the one in the area. So I think you have to accommodate for that somehow, and maybe they're willing to say, yeah, we could stick it in reverse over here, you know, instead of having to always drive forward and around. But... I think you do need to have that meeting with them and realize that, you know, they don't they don't drive that thing to everywhere they go, but it might be the one that shows up the time you need them. So, um, and then as far as uh, you know, the number of parking spots and, and things like that, yeah, I do want to see you hit ten, but is it a deal breaker? You know, in my world, not so much. Um, you know, same thing with being you know eighteen feet versus twenty feet. 
Um, no, it's not a huge deal. But I think as Robin's pointed out, the, the cumulative ask here, you know, it just keeps getting, the, the list of waivers gets longer and longer, and the more we get a little apprehensive about what we're looking at. Are we really adhering to our standards at heart? So just um, consider those things, and uh, I think we look forward to, one, some more information and your next submission. Thank you. Any I'm, other questions that you would have? Uh, well, I guess just to go back to that, that parking standard, because we've, mm -hmm. we've run into it, um, I think one other town where it's really, it, it was the same thing. They had a minimum of 10 and they said for a, uh, a drive-in rest, a drive-in restaurant. Well, when you really think about it, the drive-in restaurant they're talking about at that town was the old style where you drive in, you sit there and they come out and bring food out to your car and put it, hang it off your window and eat. So I'm just wondering if there's been thought, I mean, does that really, does the, has the ordinance been thought of for a, a restaurant with no seating well, where on that requirement because it's really we're, we're <coughs> looking at three two to three employees at a time it's in, i mean it's general. fair you probably yeah. will have you know i would say upwards of four some days employees in yeah the during building. during right. changes and things sure. like that so it's um, a fair question um i mean i've so i'll use wells as an example uh, i've been to the aroma joe's and wells and the line for the drive through was so long we decided that we would go park our car and walk up to the walk-up window because uh, we didn't want to wait in the long queue line. Yeah. So can I, see, can I see a situation like that happening here when you have 130 vehicles going through and, and trips an hour or whatever it might be? Yeah. Can I see a situation where this drive through line gets so long and it's starting to stack up near this? You know, do people start to go around and park and go up to see if they can get their coffee faster? And I think you have to consider things like yeah. that. So. I will say too that the zoning ordinance does allow the board to reduce the parking. You just have to design the site as if it will have it. Yeah, which we which we will have on our plan. We've shown an area to put a a tenth parking space um, if need be, and we can show how that last one um, will meet the standards with by the time you extend the two lines and show a radius around there um, that it won't be sticking out and blocking traffic if somebody parks in that last space as well. So as far as um, feedback from either this board on any of the other topics or questions for staff uh, before you part ways here, and then staff no, have anything that they would like to uh, make sure the applicant uh, or, or the board needs to clarify before the applicant leaves. I think we've covered it. Um, I think we'll work with the applicant offline to sort of see when we can schedule these meetings that are necessary. Okay. Great. Thank you, everyone. Good luck. Thank you. Uh, next item is staff report. All right, so I have a few items for you guys. Uh, we do have a mylar for the amended Firehawk subdivision plan, so you guys could sign that in your way out. That'd be much appreciated. It was a busy three weeks in terms of pre-construction meetings. Uh, we met with the main medical team uh, for their office building, so they're underway out there. Um, the CMP Dunstan substation, uh, they're about to get underway. And we had a joint pre-com meeting with AV Technic and Score Builders at the Downs, so they're going to start construction soon. Then one more reminder, uh, there is the Planning Board Workshop scheduled for December 12th at 6 p.m. Uh, to continue the review of the Town Center Neighborhood Master Plan with the Downs. Uh, so just if it isn't on your calendars, make sure to mark that and attend if you can. That's what I have tonight. Thanks, Jamal. Administrative Amendment Report. Uh, none at this time. Correspondence. Planning board comments. Nick, if I could just update the planning board on the long range planning committee. We are, um, recently went through the <coughs> most recent draft of the comprehensive plan revision. Um, and uh, one of the things that um, we had noticed is that there's not, a, th there's not a clear path forward for the actions in the um, uh, uh, new comprehensive plan. So staff is working on that and providing a clear path forward for how we can actually implement the, the comprehensive plan. And um, I'd be glad to update you as, as things move forward with the long range planning, planning committee. Thank you, Robert. Any other planning board comments? Not oh, Rachel? Yeah, I was wondering, um, we usually have some sort of a winter final meeting celebration. I wonder if we were going to do that this time or if the planning board 
workshop was going to ultimately morph into that. Yeah, we can discuss that. We hadn't actually, I think winter kind of crept up on us this year. <laughs> um, so we'll, uh, we'll circle back to you guys about that. It's a good idea. Thanks. Thank you. No other comments? I will make a motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Did I miss a comment over here? No. All in favor? Sure, that's unanimous. Thank you. Have a good evening, everyone.